I'm not supposed to be here. I'm an actor representing Susan Glassbell. I have no place in this play. I, Susan Glassbell, wrote this play in 1916. I wrote it about something that happened in 1900. Something I covered in my career as a journalist, before I was a Pulitzer Prize winning playwright. You'll recall that in 1916, women in this country did not have the right to vote. Yet here I was writing this little play. I hope you like this little play, Trifles. It is the first play I ever wrote. The play takes place in the kitchen of a very old farmhouse around 1900. You'll see Mr. Henderson with the notebook, played by Seth, he's the county attorney. Mr. and Mrs. Hale, they are neighbors, played by James and Sally. Leading them is Mr. Peters, played by David, who is also the sheriff. When I'm not in a play, my name is Melinda. In addition to playing Susan Glassville, I also play the sheriff's wife in trifles. And you can now call me Mrs. Peters. They're careful there. There's a patch right there, which is invisible to the eye. You all right, Mrs. Hale? Oh, yes, we have ice in our throat. It should be warmer inside. <sighs> this feels good. Step up to the fire, ladies. Oh, I'm not cold. Now, Mr. Hale, before we move things about, you explain to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning. By the way, has anything been moved? Are things just as you left them yesterday? It's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. <clears throat> no use getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove. And you know Frank. Somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday. When I had to send Frank out to Morris Center for that man who went crazy, I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get back from Omaha by today, and as long as I went over everything here myself. Well, Mr. Hale, tell just what happened when you came here yesterday morning. Well, Harry and I was headed to town with a load of potatoes. We come along the road from my place, and when we got here, I said I'm going to go see if I can't get John Wright to go in with me on a party telephone. I spoke to Wright about it before, but he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyway, and all he asked was peace and quiet. I guess you know about how much he talked himself. But I thought maybe if I talked about it before his wife, though I said to Harry as I didn't know what his wife wanted made much difference to John. Let, let, let's talk about that later, Mr. Hell. I do want to talk about it, but tell now just what happened when you got to the house. No, no I didn't see or hear anything. I, I knocked at the door and it was still, it was all quiet inside. I knew they must be up. It was past eight o'clock, so I knocked again. And I thought I heard somebody say, come in. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure yet, but I opened the door, this door. And there in that rocker sat Mrs. Wright. What was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand and was kind of pleating at it. Mm -hmm. How'd she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she's going to do next. It kind of done up. Uh -huh. How did she seem to feel about your coming? I don't think she minded one way or another. She didn't pay much attention. I said, how do, Mrs. Wright? It's cold, ain't it? She said, is it? And just went on a pleating at her apron. Well, I was surprised she didn't ask me to come up to the stove or to sit down, but just sat there rocking back and forth, not looking at me. So I said, I'd come to see if John wanted to put in a telephone. And then she laughed. Now, I guess you'd call it a laugh. I, I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said a little sharp, can't I see John? No, she said, kind of dull-like. Why well, ain't he at home, says I. Yes, says she, he's at home. Well, then why can't I see him? I asked her out of patience. Because he's dead, says she. Dead, says I. She just nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. Well, well where is he, I says. And not knowing what to say, she just pointed upstairs. Well, like that, I got up with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to here. And then I said, well, well what did he die of? He died of a rope around his neck, said she. <laughs> just went on a pleating in her apron. Well, I thought I might need help. I went out and called Harry. We went upstairs, and there he was, just okay. a black. I, I think I'd rather you point that uh, upstairs when we get up there. All right, just go on now with the rest of your story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. It looked up. 
but uh, Harry, he went up to him and he said, no, he's dead all right and we better not touch anything. So we come back downstairs and she was still sitting that same way. I said, is, uh, has anybody been notified, Mrs. Wright? No, she said, unconcerned. Well, now, who did this, Harry said uh, to Mrs. Wright. I don't know, she says. You don't know, says Harry. No, says she. Well, weren't you sleeping in the bed with him, says Harry? Yes, says she, but I was on the inside. You mean somebody put a rope around his neck and strangled him and you didn't wake up, Harry said? I didn't wake up, she said, after him. Well, we must have looked as if we didn't see how that could be, for, for after a minute she said, I sleep sound. Well, Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I said maybe we ought to let her tell her story first to the sheriff or the coroner. Mm -hmm. So Harry went fast as he could to River's place where there's a telephone. Okay, and what did Mrs. Wright do when she knew you'd gone for the coroner? Well, well she moved from that chair to this one right here, and she just kind of sat there with her hands held together looking down. Mm -hmm. Now, I got the feeling that I ought to make some conversation, so I said I'd come to see if John wanted to put in a telephone. Then she laughed, then she stopped. She looked at me, scared. I don't know. Now, maybe it wasn't scared. I, I wouldn't like to say it was. But soon, Harry got back, and then Dr. Lloyd came, and, and then you, Mr. Peters. And I guess that's all I know that you don't. Well, I guess we'll go upstairs and then out to the barn and around there. Uh, you're convinced there was nothing important to you? Nothing that would point to any motive? Nothing here but kitchen things. Oh, her fruit. It did freeze. She worried about that when it grew so cold. She said her fire would go out and the jars would break. Well, can you beat the women? Help for murder and worrying about her preserves. Well, I guess before we're through, she may have something more important than preserves to worry about. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. And yet, for all their troubles and worries, what will we do with our <coughs> ladies? Dirty towels. Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. Well, to be sure. And yet I know of some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such roller towels. Well, those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands are not always as clean as they might be. <laughs> Loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too. I did not see much of her of late years. I've not been in this house in long years. Why was that? You didn't like her? Oh, I liked her all well enough. Farmers' wives have got their hands full, Mr. Henderson, and then... Yes? Never seemed a very cheerful place. No, not cheerful. I shouldn't say she had the homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know. It's right, did you? You mean they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. I just... I don't think a place would be any cheerful for John Wright to be in uh, I'd like to talk about that later. I want to go upstairs and get the lay of things up there now. I suppose anything Mrs. Peters does will be all right. She was to take in some clothes for her, you know, and a few little things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I'd like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters, so I can keep an eye out for anything that may be of use to us. Yes, Mr. into my kitchen, snooping around and criticizing. Of course, it's no more than their duty. Duty's all right, but I'll guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make the fire, he might have got a little of this on. Wish I thought of that sooner. Seems mean to talk about her and not having things slipped up when she had to come on in such a hurry. She had bread set. Shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. No, I think maybe there's some left, Mrs. Peters. Look here, it's cherries, too. I declare, I believe it's the only one. She's going to feel awful bad after all the hard work and the hot weather. I remember the afternoon I put up my cherries. Well, I really must get those things from the front room closet. Are you coming with me, Mrs. Hale? You can help me carry them. It's cold in there. Right, it's close. I think maybe that's why she kept so much to herself. You know she didn't even belong to the ladies' aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part and then... Well, 
you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. She used to wear pretty clothes, be lively, back when she was Minnie Foster when the town girls sing in the choir. Oh my, that was 30 years ago. This all you was to take in. Well, she said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want, because there isn't much to get you dirty in jail, goodness knows. She said it was in the top drawer of the cabinet. <coughs> yes, here it is. And the little shawl that always hung behind the door. Ah, yes, there it is. Mrs. Peters. Yes, Mrs. Hale. Do you think she did it? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Asking about her apron and her little shawl and worrying about her fruit? Mr. Peters says it oh, looks bad for her. Mr. Henderson can be awful sarcastic in his speech, and he'll make fun of her saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake up when they slipped that rope under his neck. No, it's strange. They must have done it awful crafty and still. They say it's such a funny way to kill a man, making it all up like that. That's what Mr. Hale says. He says there was a gun in the house, and that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said on the way over that what was needed for the case was a motive, something to show anger or sudden emotion. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. I wonder how the men are getting on upstairs. You know, it seems kind of sneaking. Locking her up and down and then coming in here and trying to get her own house to turn against her. But, Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose it is, Mrs. You know, you better loosen up your things. You won't feel it when you go outside. She was piecing a quilt. Oh, it's a log cabin pattern. It's pretty, ain't it? I wonder, is she going to quilt it or just not? They wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's fire didn't do very much good up there, did it? Let's get out to the barn and get that cleared up. I don't see this anything so strange or taking up our time with little things or waiting for them to get the evidence on Caesar or anything to laugh about. Oh, of course, they have awful important things on their minds. Mrs. Peters, look at this. This is the part she was working on, and look at the cellar. See, all the rest is nice and even. And look at this here, it's all over the place. Why, it's as if she didn't know what she was about. Uh, oh, what are you doing, Mrs. Hale? Oh, I'm just fixing this stitcher too that's not sewn very good. That sewing almost made me fidgety. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we ought to touch things. Oh, I'll just finish up this little one here. Mrs. Peters. Yes, Mrs. Hale. What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that she was nervous. I sometimes so awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, I really must get these things wrapped up. They may be through sooner than we think. I wonder where I can find some paper and string. In the cupboard, maybe? Why, here's a bird cage. Did she have a bird, Mrs. Hale? Why, I don't know if she did. You know, there was a man last year selling canaries real cheap. I don't know, she took one, maybe she did. She used to seem real pretty herself. Seems strange to think of a bird here. But she must have had one, or why would she have a cage? I wonder where it went. Cat got it, maybe? No, she didn't have a cat. She's got that feeling about cats some people have, being afraid of them. My cat got into her room and she got real upset and asked me to take it out. My sister Bessie was just like that. It's queer, ain't it? Well, look at this door. It's broke. One hinge is pulled apart. It looks as if somebody had been rough with it. Why, yes. I wish if they were going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. Well, I sure am awful glad you came with me, Mrs. Hale. It'd be lonesome for me sitting here alone. It would, wouldn't it? I tell you what I do wish, though, Mrs. Peters. I wish I had come out here sometime when she was here. I wish I had. <coughs> well, of course, you were awful busy with your house and your children. I could have come. I stayed away because I weren't cheerful. And that's why I ought to have come. I don't like this place. Maybe because it's 
sit down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place. It always was. But I sure wish I'd come to see Minnie Foster sometime. I can see now. Oh, you mustn't on. reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. We often don't know how things are with other folks till something comes up. Not having children. It makes less work, but it makes an awful quiet house. And Wright, no quiet work and no company when you come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town a few times. They say he was a good man. Good, yes. Well, he paid his debts and he didn't drink. He kept his word as good as well with most, I guess. But he was a hard man. Just to pass the time of day with him. Like a cold wind that gets to the low. Tell you what. Why don't you take that quilt in with you go? I take it for mine. I think that's a nice idea, Mrs. Hale. There couldn't possibly be any objection to it, could there? What just what would I take? I wonder if all her patches are in here and her things. Well, um, you some red. I bet some of her summer things are in here. What a pretty box. Looks like something somebody might have given you. I bet her scissors are in here. Oh, now there's something wrapped up in a piece of silk. Oh, that's not her scissors. Oh, Mrs. Peters, it's... It's the bird. But Mrs. Peters, it's neck. Look at its neck. It's all other side, too. Somebody wrung its neck. Well, ladies, have we decided if she was going to quilt it or knot it? We think she was going to knot it. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I'm sure. Is the bird flown? Cat got it. Is there a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know. They leave. Hmm. No sign of anyone having come from the outside. Their own rope. Let's get upstairs again and go over it piece by piece. It would have had to have been someone who knew exactly She backed that bird. She was going to bury it <clears throat> in this pretty box. When I was a girl, my kitten, there was a boy who took a hatchet, and before my eyes and before I could get there, if they hadn't held me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder what it would feel like. <sighs> Never have any children in the house. Right, wouldn't have liked this bird, the thing that sighed. She used to sing. He killed that too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing that happened here that night, Mrs. Hale. Killing a man while he slept. Slipping a rope around his neck that choked the life out of him. His neck? choked the life out of him? <coughs> we don't know who killed him. We don't know. If there have been years and years of nothing and then a bird to sing to you, be awful still after the bird was still. I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in the Dakotas after my first baby died and he was just two years old and me with no other than Supposed we're going to be through finding the evidence. <laughs> I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. I wish you had known Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress and blues and stood up in that choir and said, I wish I could come over here and see her sometimes. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who's going to punish that? We mustn't. Hey, on. Oh, I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for women. You know, it's a queer thing, Mrs. Peters. We all live close together. And we all live far apart. We all go through the same thing. It's just a different kind of the same thing. You know what I would do if I was you? I wouldn't tell her that her food was gone. Tell her it ain't. Tell her it's all right. Take that in the show to her. She may never know if it's gone or not. My, it's a good thing the men weren't here. And they just laugh, getting all stirred up about a little thing like a dead canary. As if that could have anything to do with. 
when they just left. Maybe they would. Maybe they would. No, Peters. It's all perfectly clear except a reason for doing it. But you know women and juries. There was some definite thing. Something to show. Some connection to the strange way of doing it. Well, I've got the team hooked up. Very cold out there. Yeah, I'm gonna stay back here a while myself. You can send Frank back for me, can't you? I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied we can't do better. You want to see what Mrs. Peters is going to take in? No, they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. And Mrs. Peters doesn't need supervising. For that matter, the sheriff's wife is married to the law. You ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Not just that way. <laughs> married to the law. <laughs> George, I just want you to come here for a minute. We ought to take a look at these uh, windows. Hello. Windows. We'll be right out, Mr. Hale. we found out she was not going to quilt it. She was going to, uh, what is it called, ladies? We call it knot it, Mr. Henderson. 